Good evening to ladies and gentlemen. So I think we can start this session because the, so if I delay starting session, that is not ethical for those who came here in time. We are going to discuss the engineering society. <coughs> so therefore, we must maintain our discipline at least for this type of session because I know that what the difficulties that you will have to face uh, while you are coming here. Uh, and uh, I would like to, since the crowd is very limited, uh, I would like to know each other. Uh, first of all, uh, I myself, uh, by profession, I am a chartered civil engineer uh, and I work for the water resources sector in the government, especially in the Department of Irrigation. So thereafter, uh, I was the engineering service board. I don't know whether you are about, aware about that term. That is the administrator in charge of all the government sector engineers. Then I joined the Asian Development Bank as the focal point natural resource and in environment. And I am continuing my service like that. Uh, Generally, I am conducting all these sessions, especially the, those who uh, are willing to face for the charter and the un or any undergraduate free of charge. That is my policy. So I am not taking even any honorarium. I want to declare that part. Uh, in your case, I know this is not a very uh, this topic is not that healthy especially at the evening. These topics are very good in the morning. Right? So if you feel boring, you are free to take your own decision. Right? I am a very flexible person. So therefore, you can take your decision. It does not mean because sometimes I have seen, even myself have done those days. Eh? If you want to go out, you take the phone call and you pretend that getting a phone and go out and vanish. Not to do th these type of things. If you free, you can go there. Uh, I like if you can put your mobile phones into the vibration mode, because otherwise you are disturbing not to me, to your neighbor. So then, can you introduce yourself? Yeah.
let's discuss so this is not a uh, merely a lecture so i would like to share my experience with you uh, the information which i have gathered from various sources during my uh, engineering career so then basically i'm going to uh, talk about few topics those who are related to the engineering society that is moral conduct professional integrity gender issues poverty and poverty elevation so i think the in <coughs> isl b paper the you want to learn ethics no isl ethics there is a question for that one the uh, code of ethics there are eight code of ethics so if you go through that part definitely we can answer one question because they will ask one out of eight no one or two out of eight that is one way. but uh, if you talk about the engineering society uh, because my explanations are basically uh, related to the not to the definitions given in the encyclopedia or oxford dictionary because i am always trying to relate my definitions to day to day activities which you encounter in your social activities or in your engineering activities something like that so what is ethics come come ah <laughs> right the ethics is the study of how our decisions affect other people this is the this is reasonably understandable no because if you find the definition for ethics you can write a phd thesis but here the study of how our decisions when you are making your decision how those decisions affect other people that is the study of it does not mean your decision should only affect others but study of how our decisions affect other people this is the basic meaning of ethics in so then how it differ from social responsibility because sometimes the you heard the word that you can do business but this business should be ethical right you can learn your decision must be ethical you can make any decision so then please try to understand how it differs from social responsibility because now the uh, for example now uh, you are free to right being a uh, citizen of this country especially the, the males if you want to remove your shirt and relax at your home you can do that one. but you are not going to the market place like that no? so the, you think right for the males if i without a shirt if i go to the market place that is my decision how that decision will affect to the people but nothing will happen no sometimes the people might say that the man guy even though he is an engineer right those who know about to that, that engineer is that he has gone to the university has uh, too much intelligent so that the man guy but you yourself does not like to call you like that so therefore you are compelled to wear a shirt and go there right? so those are the ethics right these are not the uh, hard and fast rules so the social responsibility how the ethics differs from the social responsibility so then you should know what is social responsibility now the social responsibility covers its relationship with the external world yes the, the important word here is the external world the social responsibility means if you have any responsibility with the society 
Right? When it comes to social responsibility, it's always related to the external world. How do you define external world and, and internal world? Now, in management practices, you are in an organization, you are working to an now. There are a number of engineers, those who are from the State Engineering Corporation. Now, State Engineering Corporation is one organization. Now, the State Engineering Corporation uh, extends its service to the society, not to the employees of the State Engineering. All these employees of the State Engineering Corporation extend their service to the society and the employees are benefited. So then, while you are carrying out your the duties, you should think how that will affect to the society. So that means always the social responsibility deals with the outside the organization. Because in management practice, internal environment and external environment means within the organization, organization employees, organization properties, all these things are internal environment. The external environment is maybe your customers, not only your customers, all the others excluding those who are within the organization. So then the social responsibility is your responsibility towards the society, not inside the organization. Now, for example, I am working to the Asian Development Bank. In ADB and World Bank funded development projects, it is the social responsibility of the contractors. It's now, any contract, any organization signs with the government using ADB or World Bank funds. One of the term, one of the condition that agreement, there are certain social responsibilities. You have to fulfill, the contractor has to fulfill those conditions. Few of these things are. Every project, the contractor should conduct HIV awareness program to the public. That is not the part of your construction, no. You are coming to an agreement to construct a building, or construct a bridge, any other project, power line, right? any mechanical unit, whatever it is. That is your objective. But ADB says there is a resp social responsibility with the contractor, between the contractor and the society. So therefore, conduct HIV awareness program to the public. Why? Because we consider contractors as migrants, even the disregarding whether they are local contractors or foreign contractors. Most of the contractors are bringing the staff from the outside areas. So the human needs are unavoidable. So therefore, this is now the World Health Organization has identified the one way of spreading HIV through big projects. So therefore, ADB has imposed a rule for all contractors should conduct one or few HIV awareness programs to the public. It's a must. This is the social responsibility. So I could remember now in one of the contract, the contractor tried to conduct HIV awareness program, right? He displayed some the notices and he passed the message through Gramaniladari and he tried to invite the, the MOH and the public health inspector. But the participation was less than 10. Why? Because every person thinks 
the other person might think that this particular person has some problem with HIV that's why he is going to attend this session every person thinks like that so therefore that was not materialized right? there are things like that so being engineers you should know how to solve this problem so then when it came to my notice I said don't conduct HIV awareness program especially in a country like Sri Lanka right now if you conduct this one in uh, African country right? everyone will come because that more than 50 percent suffers from HIV there are certain countries right it's common it is very difficult to find a person who is not with HIV virus there are certain countries but in Sri Lanka we have certain certain norms right therefore what I ask them remove HIV please conduct anti dengue program right because everyone knows that uh, now the government is going to fine 25,000 to maximum therefore we could not control the people those who attended so then what we did was we gave the priority for the HIV then we conducted anti dengue also there are things like that this is the this is how the when you are thinking about the social responsibility being engineers you should think how to implement that that is also very important the other thing is the one of the other ADB requirement is maintain effective grievance redress mechanism have you heard about that word? GRM grievance redress mechanism you know, you know the grievance redress mechanism is any affected party most of the development projects there are so many affected parties right sometimes the waterways are turned during the construction right along the their buildings dust generation there are so many nuisances that the public has to face but the affected parties do not know where to complain these things so therefore in adb and world bank project it's a must to make aware to the public there is a grievance redress mechanism any affected party can write their grievance and submit to the there is a box uh, within the contractor's office or the client's office and uh, sufficient publicity has to be given so that means there is a mechanism like that one through Gramaniladari and the Pradesh Lekam. So we, we monitor and time to time we display notices close to the uh, there are public places. And once a month there is a grievance redress committee. The committee meets and solve these problems. Those are not part of our construction projects, our development. Those are the social responsibilities. And the other things take care of public community pub, uh, public or community safety and sanitary because most of the project I think, is anyone from this Colombo area you would have seen last year and year before when you are traveling along this 120 road huge construction is going on even now the project is not over and the dust generation right but you can see when you are looking at the buildings right either side of the road some are completely color, color of mud because of this mud the, the dust but nobody worries about that because they think if there is a public thinks if there is a project this is the nature we had to admit all these things and they think after the project we are getting a comfortable road and all the adverse effect will not come immediately sometimes they may get lung problems and any other disease after five years or ten years time so at that time the contract has vanished no one knows what is happening so therefore in adb world bank projects taking care about the public safety and sanitary is a must we regularly monitor that term they are not conducting that term there are sometimes in certain 
projects the adb stop the lord not in sri lanka in some other countries those are the social responsibilities and take adequate measures on environment protection what is that so i could remember in one of the project we conducted in vaunia area which from water supply and drainage flow yeah it's the pevara water supply i have heard about that it's in vaunia it's a very big project pevara is one of the stream which flows to the river from mena close to vaunia the water supply and drainage board is going to construct a reservoir like labugama kalapuwa and here you know here you have a reservoir like and they are going to construct a reservoir and collect water and pump it to the vaunia this is the project now during the eia process environment impact assessment process right adb funded project one of the uh, ecologists carried out an ecological survey how the project will affect to the fauna and flora those who are living within the inundation area and surrounding area because if you are going to construct a reservoir there is an area which is now for us but after the construction of this project it will be inundated so therefore now i think you have seen moragaha kanda couple of weeks back you saw, i think you saw in the tv the some boats are moving and collecting species no it didn't you that's a social responsibility but in this particular project we have we found two land snails and one that butterfly those who are the conservation status of this land snail is critically endangered that means it's very difficult to find that type of the land snail in sri lanka so therefore the habitat was defined as critical habitat so adb stopped the law adb said the environment protection is compulsory so therefore we are not recommending this loan unless you provide feasible solution so when it came to me what i i think the the solution by hearing the solution you may laugh what i propose is to collect all the species the small species those who are living within the inundation area and translocate them into similar habitat so what we did was we took baskets collected land snails and for the bottles we collected snakes and other reptiles to translocate them into similar habitat because we tested the in the other habitat whether the same living condition is there and we translocate the social responsibility because the, even the uh, species have the equal rights like other human beings now those are the social responsibility you are working for the when you are work in the society you have to consider those matters but still i did not come to the moral conduct because my first topic is moral conduct but to learn that one you should know what is social responsibility so then if you think the ethics because now my those who came late the site explain what is ethics ethic is study of how our decisions affect others then a straight away switch on to the social responsibility social responsibility covers its relationship with the external world now the examples which i explain how our decisions will affect the external world the external world and the internal world in terms of management is internal world is if you are working for an organization the employees the properties of this organization are internal 
environment. The external environment is beneficiaries and all the other stakeholders outside the organization in very brief. Hmm? So then I explain few examples. So now we will come back to the ethics. Ethics is more general term that covers both internal relationships and external relationships. Now this is how the ethics differs from social responsibility. Your social responsibility is being a member of your organization, how you serve to the society for the benefit of the members of the society, not to your organization, but ethics. Disregarding whether you, your internal environment and the internal external environment, your decision should not affect to the others. Now, this is the difference between the ethics and the social responsibility. So sometimes you all are using these words interchangeably without trying to understand the real meaning behind that word. So therefore, when you are using this terminal, this, please be precise on the terminology. Then you can use the right word at the right place. Otherwise, you just use words interchangeably. Now this presentation is available in the IEEE website. You can collect that one. Actually, I prepared this presentation not in the presentation mode. Because if it is a presentation mode, if I am preparing presentation mode, I am writing only the keywords in my slides. Why? When I write the keyword, you before you look at me, you look at the screen and you read the keyword. From the keyword, you can't get any understanding. You can't get just struck meaning. So that means the keyword will create a puzzle in your mind. If a puzzle is created in your mind, your next action is to look at the person who created the puzzle. Because I am the person who created the puzzle by giving the keyword. So then it's a zero second action. So then immediately you look at me. So then I am going to explain that. This is my presentation mode. But I have seen most of the presentation, the chapters of the textbooks are displayed. So then you all are going to read those things. Presenter is presenting from here. Ultimately it will become a noise in terms of communication. So they are, but in this one, I include a text. So therefore, you are not supposed to read the text because for your future use, because I know that uh, if I tell these things, when you are going out, 10% loss, that's an age. By tomorrow morning, another 10%. Now, before the examination, you can't write, remember anything, right? Because now learning these things, main objective is to pass the examination. In addition to that one, you want to learn something. Right? This is the priority. Right? When I was a under, uh, charter candidate, that was my priority. So therefore, I think your priority also must be the same. Right? So then the ethics means how your decisions, the study on ethics means study on your decision and it affects how it affects to the internal environment as well as the external. That means if you make a decision, how it immediately affect to the people, those who are working with you and to the others, that is ethics. So then I can change the, my social responsibility activities into ethics. Now the conduct HIV awareness program for both public and the employees. Now, if we conducted the HIV awareness program to the public, it is not partially fulfilled. No? Why we conducted this one? Because of the employees we brought from various various places. No, but they do not know. But we are trying to make aware to the other party. That is not correct. So we have to conduct this one, first we have to conduct this training program to the int internal society, then external society. 
then the take care of about the sanitary and safety not only the public but also your employees right the head of the organization should look after the now i could remember one example i work in the irrigation department as an engineer for nearly 25 years when i was working in the head office because you know that in government sector we have peons right they are the people who does all these odd jobs in the private sector you can't find peon because you are the peon right in my office i am the peon i am my peon if i want to get the photocopy i get my photocopy if i want but in government sector photocopy is there if the peon is absent even the photocopy is so again you don't take that one because that is not your duty there are people like that so every morning my peon feel there is a bottle on my table not even my table so he fill the bottle with water because those days we don't we didn't have this bottle water right so he every day so then one day and he the, he does a side business also providing tea to the officers in that floor and he earns something so one day i asked him uh, how do you get water he said so from the toilet now now think about that time. if you are so thirsty do you go to the toilet and get some water and drink can you make your mind to do that huh? you don't do that huh? but if somebody drinks that one you are prepared to drink it right? so these are the things you don't think about that huh? this is the internal social responsibility the, the water supply and drainage board guarantees the quality of the water whether it comes from either from a toilet or wash basin or from any other place no the same water right if i am wrong ask that water board gentleman he is there but we are very concerned about the place from where we collect the water now these are if someone goes to the courts you can win it those are the social responsibilities so the social responsibilities are not written anywhere but we have to think about that then take adequate measures on now when i went to a, a central environment authority from adb funds we wanted to conduct a workshop the cea said okay we will organize the workshop and we said that we can provide all the logistics including meals right so then uh, uh, the person with whom i deal this matter inform me if you are providing meals you must make sure no polythene is used right all the plastic bottles and other things to be taken out and there's a list of rules they gave me right so this is how the ca concern about the environment matters within the organization they are giving lectures to the public and if they are not performing on that manner inside the organization there is no ethics ethics means these good things should be performed not even inside the not only for the public but also inside the organization so that means the ethics is the study of people's values rights and norms what are the differences between these the values rights and norms the values means when you value something if you value something why you are valuing something you value something 
if you want to get it, no? The youngsters like males like females. So then he value that one. This lady is better than the other lady. Huh? Isn't it? No? You just go back to your about five, six years back. He assess those things. Right? Give some value. Right? Value to the figure, uh, value to the way of looking at. There are so many things. Those are not written. By your experience, you know these things. So, why you are well in that? You want to get it. Or other poison, you want it to be happened. So, this is how you are valued. These are the values. If you are value, if you have some value, that means you want to take it or you want it to be happened. Otherwise, you don't value that one. You want to buy that car because it gives comfortable journey to you. Similarly, you want peace to happen. Why? To avoid conflicts. Because we all like peace to happen. That's why sometimes back we said even because we everyone was looking at the end of that war, civil war. Because we like peace to be happen. This is our value. Think about these things. Now when you are using these words, if you know the correct meaning, you can easily write your essays. And the rights, a person's freedom. Sometimes you may say, this is my right. right? Now see that those who are married and have young kids, they are always fighting for the right. I want that right. They are fighting for the rights. The person's freedom to take a particular action. Then, however, there are no absolute rights. Why? Because your rights are limited by the others. Because others' rights will limit your right. That's why my first example, you would like to wear a sarong. Right? No harm if you come wearing a sarong. Who is willing to? Who is volunteered to wear a sarong and come here? Because you have to, you have a right to wear a sarong. Right? Why? Your freedom is controlled by the society. Because of the others, you are not coming here. If others see that me, that mad fellow wearing a sarong and coming to the this lecture, right? how mad this, right? So this is, this is, these are the rights. That's why I am telling the rights are not absolute because your rights are controlled. How many of your rights are controlled by your spouse? Especially think the male who got married, right? Our rights are controlled by your wife, no? Why? Ladies, they are, they are laughing. <laughs> this is the nature, right? Because the, the last week I conducted the lecture for the A paper and the how to write the <coughs> experience report. I told everyone, please put your mobile phone into vibration mode. If you get a phone call, if you receive a phone call, don't try to hide from me an answer. I bring it like this. Don't do it. Please go out because otherwise you will disturbing your neighbors and answer and come here. After 10 minutes, I got a phone call. I had to answer because I forgot all these things because the phone call is from my wife. So that my right is controlled by the rights of the others. See, that gentleman happened the same thing. Got a phone call from the wife. Right. This is the nature. These are rights. Right. Then, how to describe moral rules and moral conduct? This moral word is highly used by the military people about five, six years back. 
moral dulu. There is no moral. The moral rules, guidelines that can resolve disagreements of or rules of behavior. Because these are not hard and fast rules. The moral rules means the guidelines that can resolve disagreement. If we, if there is a conflicting situation, the moral rules can solve that. Can you tell any moral rule? Then difficult. No? You can understand the meaning, but if I ask, can you tell any moral rule? So you will have to think. No? So, so there are ways and means to define and finding examples for this moral rule. So I think that's better rather than giving these difficult examples. You know that you all are after working eight hours and came here to relax and listen to me. If I am trying to make more complicated things, I, that is the ultimately it is boring to you and boring to me as well. So that's why I am trying to help you to explain all these things in very simple manner. So then, so moral rule is what are the guidelines to resolve the disagreements of the conflicting situation. Moral conduct is the process of promoting moral rules. There are rules, the process of that rules is moral conduct. Conduct means conducting a lecture. There are rules, the process of performing those rules is moral conduct. It is very simple. The principle of human behavior, no human behavior that promotes orderly and peaceful existence in the community. That is the moral conduct. That means you have to do right things always, correct things. That is the moral conduct. How do you know that you are doing always correct things or you are always doing good things? Good, bad, right? There are no in clear cut interface between the good and bad. Something good for you is not good for your friend. Right? You know that now that we call our children don't do naughty work. Right? That is naughty for us. But for the children, it's good. So that means there is no clear cut difference between the good and bad. Right? Now there is a protest campaign today. No? Right? Now I think all of you are university students, including myself. Right? In the protest campaign, what we say? So in I think the three months once I entered the university in 1977. Jaya Jawadan became the president, right? February 3rd night, some people put black flags at Peradine Junction. Following day, Dr. Vikram Bhavaparnaratna was suspended. Even that person not in the university on the previous day. He was our maths lecturer, right? So, we don't have any maths lectures, right? Because he never fails a student. That was very important. Right? He never fails a student. So we like him. So we started strike campaign. JR Gedrapala. JR went home. No. JR didn't go, didn't go home. So we these are slogans, right? We, so like that. If I say this is good, how do you know it is good? Then how do you distinguish the good and bad? So this is the, the nature of moral conduct. Moral conduct means you should you should do good things. But when you are process moral rules, that means moral conduct, the easiest way is refraining from doing bad things. That is more reasonable, no? Us, right? Convincing you to do good things is more difficult. But you can say, don't do bad things. 
Right? That's why you hold your children. Don't do naughty work. Oh, no, that is naughty work. Right? Rather than, that, that is rather practical than trying to find the limits of goodness. Isn't it? Do you agree with me? Can you give an example? Refraining from bad things? Ladies? No idea. That is fancy. There are five rules. No? Refraining from, from bad things. Even Lord Buddha also did not try to right? define the limit of goodness. He also said, don't do bad things. Right? This is the moral conduct. Rather than trying to do good things, please try to refrain from doing bad things. But when it comes to the engineering practice, can you do it? This is the difficulty. In our society, we can stop doing bad things. It's easy. Right? You should not take things on to the others. Right? There are things like that, no? Fancy. Right? But in engineering practices, so I'll come to that. How do you find, how do you perform your moral conduct in, as an engineer? I'll come to that one. If you feel sleepy, please because. Since I am also not taking pencil every day, right? It took some time to right, write in the correct order, truly speaking. Right? This is pencil, right? To abstain from taking the life of sentient beings, that's the same. That means including trees, species, human beings, everyone abstain from taking possession of anything that has not been given by its own. <laughs> they abstain from sexual misconduct. That is, what is that one? Is that Parava Sutra or the Singhalavata Sutra? There is something like that, no? To abstain from lying or evil speech, the Hiswachana. To abstain from intoxicating drinks. It is very difficult, right? So they are both you will go to next slide. That's much better. Right? I will give you some examples. That's why I told you that I am going to share my experience with you all, then you can understand that. Now the basic theory part is this. Case one. This is the Jumbo Jet disaster in 1972. Right? I could remember this one when I was a school child, but you all can't remember. You are not, not that old. The cargo bay was developed by a subcontractor, Conway. That's the subcontractor for McDonnell Douglas. McDonnell Douglas is the main contractor in 1972. Because the subcontractor found The subcontractor, senior engineer Dan, had the vice president of the company, the cargo door could burst open and will lead to crash of the plane. But the subcontractor found this is not strengthened enough. So he informed to his company, hence the door that be, has to be redesigned and cabin flow has to strengthen. That is the senior engineer Dan's recommendation being a subcontractor's representative. So he 
put forward the, his ideas to his vice chairman. But top management did not care about that part. Because the redesign cost is very high. But the subcontractor was given a turnkey contract. Therefore, the subcontractor has to design and build. Then the construction engineer found it is not strengthened enough. So, he informed to the, his boss, they thought redesign is a cost. It was simply ignored that. So, in 1974, the cargo of DC-10 jumbo jet, that is Turkish airline, burst open close to Paris by killing 346 passengers. What is this? They did not refrain from doing bad things. Right? They realized the bad thing, but because of the money, they did not refrain from doing bad things. Now, this is good example for moral, not confined to moral conduct. Because the, the negative, the, some, there are certain examples by negative learning negative things, you can easily understand the positive things. This is what one what went wrong. Because if you read engineering textbooks, you can find this example for, to explain the moral conduct. Then the second case, Carl Houston, he is a welder, professional welder, welding supervisor for a nuclear power facility in Virginia for Stone and Weber company. So when he was supervising, he found the welding procedure is not correct and the welders are using substandard welding material and he saw the welders are not skilled enough. I think mechanical engineers you can understand better than myself. So then he realized the situation was dangerous. So he reported to Stone and Weber's manager, but manager ignored him. He reported to the headquarters. What happened? He was fired. <laughs> This is a true story. Finally, this Carl Houston, the welding supervisor, brought this issue to the level of Atomic Energy Commission. Then he carried, they carried out the investigation. Now, this is the welding of uh, nuclear power plant. plant huh? I think I have not, uh, here, I have written here. This is the welding of nuclear power plant. Now, you see if anything went wrong what could be the disaster. So, I, finally, the smart supervisor, even he was fired from the company, he brought to the matter to Atomic Energy Commission of USA. So, in investigation confirmed his allegation. Now, this is the moral conduct, right? This is how this Carl Houston performed his moral conduct. What the idea? Any question? The third one in civil engineering case, the city crop, crop center in New York, it is the sixth highest building in 1974, 70, year 74. That was completed in 77. And there was an undergraduate student who came to this organization as an implant training. So then this student, lady student asked, what will happen when the wind loading is open? Like that. Now they have designed this building for the dead uh, wind load perpendicular to this face or the perpendicular to this face. That was the design. Happened. But this undergraduate young student asked, what will happen if the wind blows in angular position? So then the, she showed the calculation the resultant force is 40 percent larger. This is the moral conduct of that young graduate. So the original design for angular braces used welded to it. And there's, there was another story also, right? 
all this angular braces the original design recommended welding joints but the contractor found it's costly and labor intensive so they have instead of welding joints they replace the welding joints with bolt joints they put nut and bolts right so then the original welder joint design had ample strength which stand for the load from straight on wind with enough safety margin you know that now in engineering designs everywhere we put safety factors no sometimes from the safe, safe uh, even the safety factor is too much we don't care about that now this is the difference between uh, you know that the architecture they are also doing designs no engineering designs the safety factor is very high but not economical so this is the difference and also engineers are doing going to do the architecture also no the two ugly you can't see look at the building twice right so they you can't understand your profession and trying to do the others profession so however the load from 70 miles per hour hurricane in 1977 there was an hurricane that came in angular direction but luckily that was deviated from the new york city it didn't blow through the new york city hardly escaped so then the students story came to the notice of the big people so then they did the wind tunnel test you know the wind tunnel test in civil engineering right and they found the there is a tendency to collapse the building once in 55 years so that means this building will fail for the wind with the return period of 55 years so if you calculate the that is statistical analysis so then what they did was immediately they strengthen the welding joints they welded the, this not the, the bolt joints with 2 inch thick steel plates welded so luckily the building was nothing happened to the building the building was re strengthened again still the building exist now this has become a big case in engineering studies but what is the moral why we say this is not moral conduct the reason is this not informing other architects about the problem your this company design company got to know the statement of the young student but they did not disclose this thing. that is also wrong. if something happen if it is if it, if they brought that one to the notice of the others others will take care about themselves but they didn't do that and in the structural engineer was criticized that the structural engineer passed away in 2004 right the insufficient oversight leading to bolt bolt rather than welding joints the subcontractors instead of welding joints they replaced bolt joint not informing the endanger to the neighbors so actively misleading the public about the extent of the danger during the reinforcement process so it was published ultimately there was a this was a big article in 1995 the building was completed in 1977 now this is a big case on ethical behavior and the last case the very famous bhopal disaster can you remember in 1984 the union carbide case in india can you remember this i think in your life it happened maybe you were small kids it occurred second night december 
in 1982 at the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant. There was a gas leak during the night period. That was the methyl isocyanate. That was shanty area. You know the shanty area, the population density is very high, unlike other places. This was highly toxic substance. Now, ultimately, the official immediate death toll was 2,259 because of the gas leak. And the government of Madhya Pradesh confirmed, confirmed the total of 3,787 deaths. There were so many things. And finally, 558,000 injuries, including 38,000 temporary or partial injuries and approximately 3,900 severe and permanently disabled injuries. It's a Bhopal disaster. The case of the disaster still remains unsolved. The courts made the decision asking unit carbide to pay compensation millions of Indian rupees but still the NGOs and civil societies are taking the case still the case is now this is also the engineers they didn't have the moral conduct they don't care about the others they care about themselves so then now I ask a question now we learn about the moral conduct, how we can define in terms of engineering. When we learn, usual moral rule comprise list of action from which to abstain. That means the past power, something like past power. You should not do these things. But in engineering practice, that is not the way. Right? You can't say don't build this, don't construct this building. Right? That will make damages to the society. But that is not engineering. No? What is the alternative? Always you should give an alternative, the feasible alternative. So therefore, there are some engineers. Oh, don't do it, don't do it. Right? They are always negative because of their safety. Because they know that if something happened, right, that will come to their shoulders. But being engineers, it is not your duty to always it's right you should refrain from doing bad things but you must propose the correct thing so then that is moral conduct moral conduct is how to do good things so so in management or in engineering this is known as due diligence have you heard about this word due diligence who heard about that word? No one? I am not asking what is due diligence. Yeah. Right? It's good. Now, due diligence is an important to engineers as water to fish. Right? For the survival of the fish, they will need water. Right? Engineers, due diligence is there. By definition, due diligence is the certain standards of care which is required for processing involving an investigation these are the, your duties investigation design engineering calculation construction consultant supervising all these things what are the minimum standards that is the due diligence that's why you get safety factors right you want to get the correct material Right? Correct. You have to assess the skillness of the machines, the skillness of the people, the minimum standard that is due diligence. If you maintain the due diligence, that means you are performing moral rules. Moral conduct is work according to the maintaining the due diligence, the minimum standards. Understood? Or get an idea. Some idea? 
Any question? Or is it still a problem? Silent mean problem. Isn't it? What about you, gentlemen, who knows the due diligence? You are comfortable with the explanation. Now, what is uh, total quality management? These are the new terms no, in the engineering society. Earlier we did quality control, right? In our days, we concerned about the quality control because this is related to due diligence, right? If those who could not understand it, right? Let me explain it again. The indifferent way, right? Repeating same example is no use. The total quality management instead of quality control. You see, nowadays, quality control means we test the quality. If the quality is above the standard, we accept that one, otherwise we reject it. That is quality control. Now, for example, in concrete testing, there are civil engineers. We test the compressive strength of concrete using some equipments. In order to test the, there are two stage testing. First stage is seven days after placing the concrete, you have to test the sample. Second stage is after 28 days, some will test after 14 days as well, right, it is done. So if, forget about the 28 days, if the 7 days strength fail, are we going to break the concrete and reconstruct it? The quality is bad. How can we reject that one? If it is a small bottle, we can reject that one, no matter. But this is massive concrete, we have placed the concrete, you can't reject it, right? So then write it letters here and there, huh? lot of things. But we think, if, we, if you can make sure the quality is achieved, right? If you can guarantee the quality is achieved, that is total quality control, total quality management. Something like now. Now, if your wife is not in the home in a one day, you are supposed to do all the carry out all these cooking activities. Do you know the, how to maintain the quality? You don't know. Right? But the wife can say, right? you put this is the amounts of ingredients. If you put these things, you can reach the quality. But if you do that one, even your dog will not eat. That is happening, you know. Right. Now the ladies are becoming more smarter in front of all luck of us, no? That is there, no? That is the way of the society. So this is total quality management. Now, for example, if we take the same example, total quality management of concrete, first we should know what are the ingredients, right? Like your wife is preparing a meal, sand, metal, cement, water, those are the ingredients. Then you can check, you can establish the standard for those materials. The sand, free from debris. There are or the gradation of the sand, there are tests. You can check the sample before you bring them into the site. If the contractor brought it to the site, what will happen? It's a cost, no? Contractor has bear a cost. We, we, we may think, right? That's the matter of contractor. We don't care about that. But if the contractor is losing, that means the society is losing because we all are the component of this society. So therefore, in total quality management in concreting, you should go to the original place where the sand is mining. From that place, you have to test the material and you must make sure 
the tested material is supplied by the contract and you should go to the metal crusher and check there are test attribution test gradation test and whether the tested material is supplied and the cement the standard are maintained is a less standard oil then the bringing material how do they bring the material that is also important how do they unload it sometimes the, if the material is very quality material but they will unload it to the muddy place that, that's also maintain the quality and the way of mixing mixing time the number of the rpm of the mixer if you establish all these standards at various various places ultimately final quality is achieved you need not worry about that part in assembly lines in mechanical engineers they know that, that is called the business process reengineering no you have to reengineer your process you dismantle the process into small elements and each and every element you establish the standards and you check whether the standards are maintained at each and every small place if it is maintained you need not to worry about the final quality now this is the due diligence in engineering practice you have to maintain the minimum standard right, from a to z that is moral conduct what the idea do you want to break for 5 minutes not necessary if you want you are free ha huh? now see for example due diligence we like to know that bridge we are driving on will not collapse right A state engineering corporation are you are not building bridges no that the, the sd and cc no state development and construction corporation they do the bridges no but i also started my career from sd and cc so they are both a lot of respect to that organization and on the airplane we are flying will not December in the sky. That is the minimum status we are expecting. No? So whole rationale for applying due diligence in our professional undertaking is to protect others from pitfalls resulting from oversight. So please careful about yourself as well as the others. That is ethics. Right, internal environment as well as the external environment. The moral conduct is maintained in the due diligence. So ultimately, all these tough words will come to a end of end with the simplest explanation. So therefore, please try to understand these things with your examples. That is the best way. So this is all what can I can explain about the. moral conduct then engineering society the other one is the professional integrity so that is also important because this presentation is available in the isl website in the, in the youtube also this is available right you can take that one i have no objection this is for yours what is professional integrity it's very the words right are not the the, the use of friendly you no know? these are not very use of friendly so that's why but how you you want to learn because of the passing b paper no? that's also must so i am trying to give something more than to the b paper <laughs> but it does not mean right you are going to fail the b paper right you have to pass that one the professional integrity is the quality of being honest 
or having strong moral principles. That is your quality. The professional, now moral conduct is doing things with respect to the due diligence, maintaining due diligence. That is a process. Right? But your intention has to be doing good things. Even your boss asks you to do so, otherwise if you think because of my boss I am doing this, this, otherwise I don't care, that means you are not maintaining the professional contact. Right? Your intention of doing, maintaining the due diligence is the professional interpretation. Right? You can, so in that sense, now in moral conduct, you are all, you are supposed to do things which the society will not reject. That means you will have to conduct things which are acceptable, reasonably acceptable to the society. That is the moral conduct. conduct. But professional integrity means your intention of doing honest things. That is like the karma in Buddhism because I have not mastered Buddhism, right? Very honestly, right? You know that now that, have you heard about this Ahosi karma? Ladies, have you heard Ahosi karma? Because you have done wrong thing but not intentionally. So then you will be excused. So that is, profit. now that is not moral conduct. In moral conduct, you must make sure that you are doing correct things. But in professional integrity, there is an excuse if you have not done it in intentionally. Right? That is the, your honesty. You must prove this is my honesty. But this is completely, I, I, I did not have any intention to do these things. But as a result of my activities, this has happened. So that is the difference between the moral conduct and professional integrity. And the other thing is the collection of qualities clustered around truth and fair dealing. Now, integrity by association, a duty of whistleblow. Have you heard about this word, whistleblow? In my previous example, I said that the, this is the welding case in uh, nuclear, nuclear power plant. That welding supervisor, that was the whistleblow. He brought it to the notice of immediate boss, then the vice chairman, by failing, he brought to the notice of the nuclear association. That is the whistleblow. If you see that wrong thing is happening, you must bring it to the notice of the correct place. Sometimes our engineers think, I know that is wrong, but if I get involved with that term, right, it's additional burden. So therefore, I keep quiet. That is not professional integrity. So that means intentionally you are avoiding happening wrong things. You know that the wrong thing is happening, but intentionally you are avoiding that part. That is violation of professional integrity. So now see the difference between these things, the moral conduct, professional integrity, in professional integrity. If you see something happening incorrectly, you can't shut your eyes. And also, if something happened without your intention, you are excused. So this is the, try to understand this, the difference between these words. So in a business environment, professional integrity has serious consequences for a company success. That is why the private sector, most of the private sector organization, if an employee does a wrong thing, immediately fire. But in government sector, they can do all objects, but if the person is fired, strike. This is the difference between the private sector and public sector. But in public sector, the private sector, some 
CEOs are not ethical. Because they concentrate on their profit margin. So there are things like that. So a business that develops a poor reputation in this area is like to lose customers. Now if any organization, their business, they have to maintain the reputation. If they develop poor reputation, that means they are losing customers. That means we know that part, the employees intentionally doing wrong things. So what is the ultimate result? The company will be closed. Now, the lack of professional integrity in products, service, transaction can have legal consequences of grave significance. Sometimes, ultimate, can you heard in expressway, southern expressway, one bridge was collapsed, right? Can you remember that story? One concrete bridge was collapsed, one person died. So, in investigation, under after the investigation, they found the consultant has instructed to reduce the amount of reinforcement, say 10 percent, this over reinforced design. Then the contractor has reduced the reinforcement by keeping a lap lane along a one line. That was the lapping. So you know that you are, when you are lapping, you are using the alternative lapping. But that person has from that line is collapsed. Ultimately, now see, please analyze this case. Right? Ultimately, contractor said, I carried out the instructions given by the consultant. Consultant is the engineer to the contract. So therefore, contra contract consultant has is responsible for the failure. Right? That is the moral misconduct is done by the contractor. Because we have not intentionally done that one because we have carried out the instructions given by the consultant. That means from the contractor said, we have not violated the professional integrity because intentionally we have not done that. Then the consultant said, consultant should maintain the minimum standards. That is the moral conduct. Contractor said, that is the responsibility of the consultant. Finally, it went for the arbitration. At the arbitration, the judgment was completely different. The judgment said, being a contractor, contractor should have some sort of skills, especially if you are a bridge constructor, the bridge contractor, you must have, you must give, you have number of chartered engineers, experienced engineers, design engineers, construction, everything is the package. In a situation like that, right, if the consultant does a mistake, you have to, you, are, you must be in a position to rectify. You are not a contractor to carry out all the instructions given by the consultant. Ultimately, contractor has to pay the compensation to the family as well as to reconstruct the bridge. This is how they analyze the case using moral conduct and professional interpretation. This is a very good case for you all. So, and Another example for the electrical and uh, engineers, but since I am an elect civil engineer, I am trying to, my experiences with civil engineering things. Now the General Electric Company, you have heard about that one, one of the most oldest and reputed company in the world, it starts with 60 page booklet that lays out code of conduct, General Electric code of conduct and its application in various situations because they have given number of examples for the professional 
interpret how do you work honestly how do you do correct things intentionally that is the gc's code of conduct and also the adb we have anti corruption and integrity we have a policy of anti corruption and integrity because we have defined the anti corruption in different ways so therefore it direct us to refrain from doing bad things so that is we are that help us to for the moral conduct always do good things and have you heard about the there are some government sector armfr strategy report have you heard about the administrative court and the financial regulations in the government sector now the volume 2 of the establishment code of the government of sri lanka says define how what are the different type of misconduct and it very clearly says because i am i who handle discipline of engineers when i was working as the director engineering service board for a period of 5 years always i try to understand whether the engineer has done this thing in intentionally done the wrong thing because lot of engineers with the intention of achieving tasks sometimes they violate the rules and regulations but if you estimate the ultimate productivity not the individual loss in a particular occasion if you get the cumulative output that is more productive in a situation like that every situation so my explanation i give give a you should not look at a particular point take the integration or the cumulative output and check whether it is the, the person has done intentionally a wrong thing or if his or her intention is achieving the task so if his intention is good not a single engineer was punished during my period but there are work cases <laughs> right very few cases for example in one of the auditorium like that right the 50 fans ceiling fans has to be fixed right even without fixing even a single fan the total payment has made <laughs> right so then in the case how can we say intentionally he made the payment right for the benefit of the society at least but now there were now if please an, try to analyze this case because the technical officer is the person who has to submit the claim together with the contractor's representative so it's the accountability of the technical officer to produce correct measurements isn't it accountability means if your accountability is if you do wrong thing you are liable to a punishment that is accountability so it's the accountability of the technical officer it's the accountability of technical officer to produce right bill so then what is the accountability of the engineer accountability of the technical officer is to produce correct measurements precise measurement but the accountability of the engineer engineer is there to see the overall finish overall completion the engineer is engineer's accountability is for the overall completion satisfactory completion so instead of 50 fans if the technical officer has produced the bill for 50 fans by fi fixing 47 fans so i definitely release the engineer because the engineer is not supposed to count all 50 fans so overall 
once he come here he can look at right he could not find out of 50 fans the missing three fans that is beyond the engineer's accountability but it is within the accountability of the person who is accountable for the correct measurements so this is how you have to distinguish the accountability of different places but in government sector if engineer technical officer does a mistake all this bullshit audits or investigator they will fix to the series of people without knowing the difference between the responsibility and the accountability these are there so that's why the you must learn the correct meaning of these terms so then it is very easy to try the defend yourself in your hardships and so how do you establish professional integrity at your working place there are few things any employee is expected to extend loyal contribution to the organization and is required to discharge the duties with diligence and efficiency now i could remember the one of the occasion we interviewed one engineer for the recruitment of the asian development bank i was in the interview panel and out of all he was the most successful engineer right but our recruitment process will take normally 3 months right that's the process right all the decisions are taken and the headquarters in manila so there are there are so many things to be done but in between there was a asian development bank project the adb has recommended some sort of selection selecting a particular contractor by following the adb guidelines and this engineer was representing the client so for that adb's declaration he has highly criticized that term. and he said he has mentioned if you follow the adb guidelines this is the amount of loss to the government they are we are not recommending that term. right so once this was debated at the adb table so then some nothing happened but after the 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 discussion they have a rumors going here and there should we recruit a person who criticizes the organization so then i explained that term. he is the most loyal person he is loyal to his organization still that person is not a member of our company our organization as long as this person is working for his organization should he should be loyal to his organization so therefore my judgment is he is the most loyal person this one example this was not happen in the adb this was happen in some other organization if i tell you the organization name of the organization you can easily find that term so i do not want to declare that term so i undertake the responsibility right i was in the panel the employees required to familiar with procedures rules regulations and norms so always in order to maintain the professional integrity you should know the rules regulation and the procedures what is the difference between the rules and regulations hmm? there are rules there are regulations what is the difference between the rules and regulations have hmm? have ever thought about this one but how many times you are using this one no? this two words rules and regulations right have you ever tried to find out the difference between the rules and regulations have you this is one of our weakness there are so similar words but we don't try to now the, the one word is the two similar word is the responsibility and the accountability what is the difference between the responsibility and the accountability the accountability is 
something more than to the responsibility. Responsibility is always your commitment to your higher authority or to your organization. You are always responsible to your boss or to your organization. The accountability is your answerability for your work. What is the answerability for your work? That means if you did the wrong thing, you will be punished. That is why it means answerability. You are answerability. You are not answerable. So, answerability is the answerability and the responsibility. The, the responsibility is your commitment to the higher authority. Answerability is if something went wrong, you will be punished. Answerability and responsibility is the accountability. If you are accountable, you have a commitment to a higher authorities. And together with, there is something it went wrong, you will be punished. The responsibility itself is your commitment to the higher authority. So this is the difference between that. In Singhala, we said the Vaga Kima Sa Vaga Veema, no? That's the difference. Vaga Veema is Vaga Kima plus something. Vaga Kima is the only for the top management. So in the rules and regulations also, you have a lot of rules. Even at home, you have rules. You say that you are small kids, you say, don't do that one. Right? Rules. You impose rules. But the regulations is also rules, but something more than to the rules. Because the regulations are approved by your organization. Right? Your organization has rules and regulations. The regulations you can't violate. If you violate the regulation, you will be punished. But the rules you can change. Because at your home, how many rules you change? Right? So this is the difference between the rules and regulations. But the regulations are authorized by legislation. Procedures, you know what are the procedures. So then, this is something about the professional integrity. There are some other statements I have given because I told you my presentation is not in the presentation mode. I explain you what is the presentation mode because we, this is something more than to the presentation mode because if you download this one, you can read some more, not because of anything, you will be losing your memory when you are going out because you have some other priorities. When you go to the priority, priority list is home priority. When you are at the office, that priority. But there is a side priority to become a chartered engineer also. That is why you are coming in the afternoon. Right? And the gender issues. What is gender? Don't ask me the single word for that or not. <laughs> because one of the NGO has translated this one into Sinhala. Right? I can't disclose that term. <laughs> right? So therefore, we just end this gender. Now, the, now in Sri Lanka, the gender means women's right. Right? Isn't it? Ladies will disagree with me. It's a different matter. But it is not that one. Gender means the roles, gender refers to the roles and responsibilities of men and women that are created in our families, our societies and our culture. That is gender. Because you know that in Sri Lanka, there is a women's bureau. No? You know, women's bureau. Kanta Karan, have you heard about that? Right? Now in 1980s, when I was working in Hambantot area as an irrigation engineer, then we had a workshop, right? district level officers training workshop. Right? So that workshop, 
this immense bureau team came, right? And they explained that um, now the ladies, now think about in mid, mid 80s, huh? sometimes before you go. Right? So they explained that the women so skilled, women are skilled, they can drive vehicles, they can do mason work, and a lot of things. Right? And they asked to ask us to ask questions. Right? So I was, as usual, at the corner, tail end. Right? Like that gentleman. So then everyone asked questions. Right? Finally, every time I think a question to be asked, that is asked by some, somebody else. <laughs> Finally, my turn came. I asked why you could not find a lady as the chairman of the women's bureau. You are the chairman of the women's bureau was a male person. <laughs> so then that man, that person got angry with me because I was a very junior engineer, not like this, the, the white beard, the, the moustache. It was very black those days and very young looking person. That man was a very old person. <laughs> he asked, who you are? I am an engineer. Ah, the engineers are too much people. They are asking nonsense <laughs> like that. <laughs> Uh, things are happening like this in this society, right? So, I am not going to make the, this, this is not the insult for the ladies, right? At that time, right? Not nowadays. So, the social differentiation such as political status, class, that is the social class, ethnicity, physical and mental disability, age, describes the gender issues because these are the now the some people says the the maintaining equal rights between men and women that is true but the gender issues is identifying the capabilities of men and women that is the gender analysis now see one example listen the at home not at five star hotels at home, the ladies can cook better than me, but in a five star hotel, it's a different way. Right? These are the capabilities of men and women. Now, have you heard about that? This Gamarala story the Gamarala uh, wanted to exchange the duties of his wife, right? And he handed over his wife, uh, he took over the wife's duties and asked the harmony to go to the so ultimately, the house was burned. No? I have heard that story in the small time. That is, we should do, we should clearly distinguish the capabilities. Right? That is the gender analysis. It is not giving prior to the ladies or giving prior to the male. It's not like that. And there are some countries they dominate. The ladies are dominating. Lady dominated country. Have you heard about at least one country ladies? Lady dominating country? You don't know? My God. Hmm? Sir? I am not sure about that, huh? but I know one country, the Netherlands. Because I did my higher studies in the Netherlands. If male and female having equal qualifications compete for one job, the priority is given to the lady. All these ten wheelers are driven by the ladies, right? very gigantic ladies. And the second priority, Netherlands, for the doors, the males are getting the third priority. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> there are countries like that, very respectable doors. Right? For a dog bite, those days, the dog owner should pay 60,000 guilders, not euros those days. One guilder equal to 35 rupees. Because one of my Nepalese friends, when he was walking along the road to the open market, 
he put the leg like this and asked dog bite me bite me <laughs> because he had a huge bite because he is from the, the, the himalayas mountain himalayas so he the, he had lot of dog bites in his leg he doesn't care about that part. so he asked the dog to uh, the bite him because he can claim 60000 but don't dog did not care that bugger <laughs> so smart dogs in that country that is the, the equality so i i'll stop exactly seven no the concept of gender is wider vital because it apply to social analysis and it reveals how women subordination or men's domination is socially constructed now this is how because most of the places hmm, in hunt in asian countries right women subordination and men's domination is exist that's why in our countries right the gender issues are more related to the ladies right but in the country like netherlands the gender issues are more related to the men so once you go to that country you will realize that i think most of the houses the lady dominates but gents are very peaceful <laughs> they are very calm and quiet very gentleman type so is the nature we can't survive there <laughs> and this gender analysis is the collection and analysis of sex uh, disaggregated informations the, the from the gender analysis we want to find out for which areas the women are skilled for which areas the men are skilled and we have promote like that and it does not mean but now for example you take the have you heard about the hussein bolt right fastest sprinter in the world can any lady can beat him it's not possible right these are the capabilities right so if the hussein bolt can finish the 100 meters by 9.7 seconds right can you train a lady to achieve that performance the lady will die so their bearing capacity is stamina is lesser than male people that's how so gender analysis means to identify the capabilities of males and females or lay men and women and promote that term. gender equity these are few terms is the process of being fair to men and women that is there right you must be fair to men and women you should not if there is a beautiful lady some youth they will support no there are things like that no so it's not like that the gender equity is the process of being fair to men and women then gender equality means that women and men have equal conditions for realizing their full human rights so there are different gender equity is the process of be fair to the men and women you must be fair you should not have any difference between while you are treating for the male and female that is gender equity gender equality is the condition you must provide the conditions for both in a same manner so which means that equity means means equality is the result equality is the ultimate result if you maintain the gender equity you will be ended up with gender equality this is the two different things from this point i'll stop that one because there are so many other things under the engineering society so when i am undertaking this lecture so i explain them in my lectures i am trying to explain things very slowly 
So therefore, I am unable to complete entire syllabus. Right? If you want, you can give me another one day if they are willing to come there. Right? So therefore, giving too much of things after four, five o'clock, right? Now you have certain other social responsibilities, no? When you are going home to bring loaf of bread, eh? so in that one, taking chilies and other things, those are the, what I am doing. <laughs> right? So then at least part of that one you are supposed to do. So they are oh, I think this is enough, no? Isn't it? If too much of things, nothing. No? I think from these two, you will be getting some questions, right? But unfortunately, I am not supposed to prepare, compose the questions, right? If I prepare the question, my question is, with your own words, please explain moral conduct, giving some examples, right? This is what we want to test, no? Otherwise, asking definitions and giving those things. Okay then, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, you can ask me. If you have anything to be clarified, please note down my mobile phone number. If you want, not 71 double four. 21 Four three five. Did I say not double seven? Not seven one, no? not seven one. Double two one seven four three five. Huh? Big issue. Hello. All right, all right, all right. I have finished now. I'll come. No, no, not my big boss, the young boss, <laughs> elder daughter. <laughs> She's waiting for me at my office. That is more tougher than why. <laughs> Younger one is too much. It's very difficult. Not seven one double four two one four three five. Right? Okay then. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you on some other day.